Hey everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. Today we are jumping deeper into the Lego Vault to take a look at a rather large Lego minifigure collection. We're gonna do a full review for you. This is the Jurassic World minifigure collection. Every single Jurassic World fig plus Jurassic Park. I kind of know this as the Jurassic Park collection just because I grew up with those original movies. And though there's more than uh, what the official number is here in the shot, 63 is the official total number, though I've included a few earlier studio figs and there is a single character repeat if you can spot him let me know the total cost of this collection not including shipping at its minimum is around 315 us dollars i know people have been asking to know what the total cost of the collection is and that doesn't include the dinosaurs either realistically sourcing and shipping all of these pieces to yourself would probably run significantly higher but that is the aggregate amount that i got from searching through all of the bricklink listed prices like every collection video i'm going to be going through these guys chronologically from when they came out what sets they came out in and how much they are currently worth on the bricklink market and i will also be showing off and talking about their distinctive features and what actually makes them unique if you enjoy what we do here you can always like or subscribe, share the video, and also let me know what type of collection you might want to see in the future, whether it's an update or a brand new minifig collection. Now taking a real quick look at the first figs here between 2001 and 2002, some of these guys came out in the studio sets. I just wanted to pay a quick nod to the dinosaur themed sets that came out before the Jurassic Park or Jurassic World ones. You'll recognize Johnny Thunder from a variety of different pieces. The cameraman has been in I think 13 different sets while variations of Pip and Reed were in a bunch of studio sets the uh, the pilot jumped out in a couple and none of them are particularly collectible or even have much to do with the collection I just thought some of these early sets that they appeared in deserved a quick little nod to the beginning of dinosaurs in Lego all right now that we got that out of the way the first official figure part of this collection is Simon Moss Ronnie from 2015 the first Jurassic World movie came out along with the first wave of Lego sets from the Pteranodon capture set he appeared here and frankly most of him is actually exclusive parts being the face the legs and the print for his torso he seems decently detailed with some nice line detailings on his body and solid expressions being three dollars brand new he appeared in this set along with the ACU trooper there's many versions of this guy what makes this figure unique is the particular expressions that he has also he's the only one that has a visor on his helmet personally I think the actual mold for his vest is really awesome and because there's variations of this fig that don't have a vest the printing underneath is pretty rock solid too he's around three bucks as well and then the next set the Lophosaurus ambush gives us gray he's got an exclusive print for his torso and his expressions are also special he's rocking that hobbit hairpiece and unlike the hobbits I don't think he was short enough to warrant small minifigure legs but if they had made this character nowadays they probably would have given him those medium size legs that can still bend because he is a bit shorter another version of the ACU trooper was also released in this set he's got the same body print as the previous one no armor this time and a repeated facial print from an old Naboo security guard from 2014 a version of him with a vest came out in dimensions so technically uh, that is a different version of the guy and then also from that same dimensions pack plus the Raptor rampage set comes the first version of our main character Owen both his leg and torso belong just to this character nobody else the facial print was on star lord obviously but actually a few other figs as well he's not amazingly common but also not that well sought after being around four bucks if you want to get him brand new and then also from the raptor rampage set is claire her facial print is relatively uncommon exclusive body prints and this is the only time you can get this hair mold in this particular dark orange color she's also a pretty low demand fig coming in at around two bucks and from the same set is another acu trooper what makes him unique is just the different combination of facial expression and hat. He's around $3. I have a feeling people just like using these kinds of guys for battle scenes. Now this next fig I actually kind of like. Vic Hoskins. The character himself from the movie, not so much, but 
This is just such a fun looking bad guy with that shoulder holster print. He appeared in the T-Rex tracker set. He's got kind of a generic bad guy face, not that common. Same thing for his hair mold in this color. And of course his only exclusive piece is the actual print for his torso. He's around $4 if you wanted to get him brand new. And then from the same set is this vet. There's actually two different versions of this guy in the collection. He's got the angry expression, the special vet vest print, and also a nice fedora, which which isn't that common of a piece nowadays. With a little bit of rounding, I'd say he's roughly three bucks, and then we get another ACU trooper, this time with a female face. Her face is not particularly rare, but for some reason this figure is a dollar more than the other ACU troopers, coming in at closer to four, maybe even five bucks. And now we are looking at Zack from the Indominus Rex Breakout set. This was a really big, expensive one, very popular set. And though the prints for him may not seem very remarkable, the hoodie and sweatshirt is very simple. His face kind of looks sort of generic, but guess what? It's the only time this print came out uh, was from this set for the torso. And Dick Grayson from the classic Batman TV uh, Batcave set, uh, that was the only time that expression was used. So he's around 12 or 13 bucks, a little bit more collectible, and also one of the least listed figs in this whole collection. It's a combination of being not very common and also not very remarkable. Currently, there are less than 10 versions of this figure circulating on Bricklink right now. And then here's a kind of interesting, slightly more significant figure, I would say, Dr. Wu. His legs, torso, and face are all unique just for him. And when he first came out, the medium azure hands that represent the gloves, those nice light blue latex gloves, was the first time that they were actually produced for a fig. At least in that color, obviously, not a minifigure hand. And he also appeared in a pretty decent little poly bag as well. He's around six bucks, and then we get a standard ACU trooper again. His facial print is actually Winston from Ghostbusters, which is a fun little anecdote. And because I suppose his facial print is just slightly less common than other ones, he is around four or five bucks. And now we are looking at vet number two. Once again, same set he was released in. His facial expression has changed ever so slightly. And he's just a $2 fig, not very significant. Now we're jumping up to another set that I think was pretty darn popular for a lot of people. The Raptor Escape in this set was Barry, who was a pretty significant character from the first film. He has this weird wider chin at the bottom that just doesn't match his face shape at all, the actor's face shape. It almost feels like they were trying to add a double chin, which is not at all how this guy looks. But either way, the facial expression is unique just to him. The print for his torso is unique just to him. Decent detailing, a little bit flat. And he's around 10 or 11 bucks if you want to get him brand new. From the same set is another vet. He's got the old school bowl haircut, which is kind of funny. His expression belongs to the original Peter Bankman, which is kind of interesting. Another Ghostbuster character face. And the bowl cut, I believe, I believe was originally molded for Ron Weasley in a different color. Now decently common though, not that popular considering it's such a goofy look. Then a couple years pass before we get new Jurassic World slash Jurassic Park figs. That's because the next movie came out in 2018 and the first smallest set features our latest version of Owen. All these prints are new, special just for him. That includes the facial print. It only exists for this character, but he also appeared in six other sets. A very, very common fig, two bucks. And in that same first set comes the tracker with the female face. Once again, a lot of the extras in this theme have pretty decent tactical prints. She's still $2 though, listed slightly higher than Owen, and her face is also shared by Poison Ivy and Mantis. From the Stiggy Moloch breakout set, uh, that's the name of this dinosaur from the set, comes another tracker. This fig's got a different face and hat. Nothing really special about this guy, same price. And then here is our second version of Dr. Wu. Frankly, way less cool. He still has an exclusive print for his facial expressions and torso, but honestly, nothing very wowing here. Can Wheatley is a little bit more interesting with that shoulder strap and a few pouches for, I think, Tranquilizer there. He appeared in Blue's Helicopter Pursuit as well as one other set, and when he was first released, that face was an exclusive print, but has later been taken by Cornelius Fudge. Same set, different tracker. He's called a guard this time, but he's wearing an aviator cap, and he's really a pilot. Doesn't matter, every
everything on him is extremely common, $2. And then once again, same set, same Owen as we saw before, but this time he's got a little bag on his back, technically, that makes him a different release, but his price did not significantly change from before. Immediately, we get a new Owen from a new set from the Carnotaurus Gyrosphere Escape. Same expression, same pants, same hair, different torso with a rip in the side. That's actually kind of a nice print to get. If you want to make your own custom Ash from Army of Darkness, that is a decent one to consider for sure. He also appeared in a little booklet from Poland as well as a release. He's worth the same as the other versions of Owen. And then we get our second and more common version of Claire Deering. She appeared in the same set plus three others. Her expressions are exclusive to just this fig and a later version of the same character. And frankly, I think this is one of the better torso prints from the collection this year. Some of the line stretch wrinkles in her shirt melt into the negative space for the hips. That's a nice detail to include. You don't often get that with female figs. It's a small thing to point out, but I look at figs all day, so mwah. Oh yeah, Franklin Webb was a character in the same set. His torso print is exclusive yet unremarkable, and his faces are also exclusive with a pretty Pretty decent alternate scared one. And now we've jumped up to one of the stranger and more interesting sets from all of Jurassic World, I would say. The Indoraptor Rampage at Lockwood Estate. Really long title, lots of figs, and the first one up is Macy Lockwood. Her face is a little bit rare, also belonging to Lex Murphy, you'll see it later this year. And the torso print is exclusive to just this character. It's not a bad casual print, I appreciate the extra bit of color, though nothing pops out as particularly amazing. She's very cheap, most of these figs are two bucks if you can't already tell. And then here is Eli Mills, or basically standard bad guy in a black suit with slicked hair. The torso print is incredibly simple, though not particularly common. It's kind of just the updated black suit. It'll probably change up again in another couple years. And then we have even less common print detailing for a suit from Gunnar Eversol. Those dark tan window pane checks on the jacket are exclusive just to him. Same thing with his expressions. I do like this weird chubby disgruntled expression that we have. And then we're jumping onto the Delos Dilophosaurus Outpost attack set that had a pretty decent looking tracker. I like that mohawk piece, not used nearly often enough. Originally coming from Mr. T and getting reused just a handful of other times, this tracker is slightly more expensive than a lot of the other main characters we've seen so far. And the same goes for this female guard as well. Decent couple of expressions for sure. And then we have this much more stern guy with the vision goggles or whatever you call them, the night vision. Frankly, I was just a fan of this set because it came with a bunch of those flexi flat silver tube pieces. Pieces, but nothing beats the next set. The Jurassic Park Velociraptor Chase set is an awesome bit of nostalgia. It's a pretty decently made little bit of building as well. We get some cool exclusive figs from the original movie. First up is Alan Grant. He appears in another awesomely nostalgic Jurassic Park set at the end of this video. And the print detailing for him here is pretty rock solid when it comes to both his face and the shirt with the little red handkerchief. He's maybe around four bucks. And then Ellie is by far a much more interestingly detailed character. Character. Her expressions are more fun, the torso is detailed better, and the legs are detailed much better, being dual molded with printing on the sides on top of it. She is priced around the same, and then here is Lex Murphy. She's got exclusive and well thought out printing details for her little tank top shirt. I like the designs there. The color for her hair was exclusive at the time of release of this set, though it's been used a couple other times since then in this medium nougat. And then Tim Murphy shares the same face with Seamus Finnegan, while also having a decently well detailed exclusive torso print on top of that. Would have loved to get maybe two or three or four more sets from the original Jurassic Park movie, but hey, I'm pretty happy from getting a bit of the main gang from this not very expensive set, at least in the grand scheme of things. Now we've jumped to the T-Rex transport set. This is a fun one. Here's another guard with a different face. Interestingly enough, it's exclusive just to this guard, which I find very strange. He's no more or less expensive. Maybe he's based on a specific character, though he's not listed. And then here's another guard, same prints all around. He's got a pretty standard angry expression. His scarf is really the thing that makes him slightly different. He's got pretty standard pricing as well. And then the last fig from this set is Zia Rodriguez, one of the best mini figs from this collection. By far my favorite aspect of this character are the dual molded legs. It shows the high top red converse. You got the little white stripe that goes along the bottom and sides, but also the print for her torso is pretty spectacular as well. You got a little bit of shine for the zipper print on the sides. Great expressions with the nice wide red rim glasses. There's just a lot of unique features for this fig. She's around $5. And that's it for the standard sets of the year, though there was a Bricktober slash 
Toys R Us exclusive collectible minifigure pack for Jurassic World. So because of the way they were released and the fact that they have pretty much exclusive printing for every little bit of them, they're a little bit more highly priced. Claire Deering is around six bucks. She's got a longer gray jacket with prints that go onto the groin piece and legs. Expressions only made for this particular character. I feel like the eyelashes are slightly thicker and pretty decent all around, though not nearly as sought after as Ian Malcolm. It's the first time this character was actually available. He's pretty popular from the original movie and he sells for around $15. And I did think it was kind of interesting that they used the old Anakin hair mold uh, for his swept to the side hair. The print here is very, very detailed though. You can see, uh, I think they really went for a particular aspect of Ian Malcolm that made him popular. And then the last fig is actually pretty good. It's another Owen, but he just looks a lot better, I think, with the tan shirt. I like the copper highlight detailing of the zippers shining through on the brown vest. And he's also got a little bit of printing on the arm. One of two figures from this collection that has arm printing. He's also around six bucks. And then there were some juniors sets that also came out for this theme. This is a scientist. That's basically all he's called. Decent prints though. He appeared in the T-Rex breakout set, has an exclusive print for his torso, and shares a face print with Justin Hammer, who came out the year before him. The same set also has another other guard. It's really funny that they made different exclusive guard printing that's just simpler than the Jurassic World ones. I would have thought it would be simpler to have just one version of a print, but maybe it really is that much cheaper to just have less uh, colors on one character. Okay, I'm going off. He's super cheap, and his face was only put onto one other minifigure head from Overwatch. The Pteranodon Escape had this guard with almost the exact same expression, only now he's slightly confused. He's priced the same, and then the same goes for this next female guard, or guard with female head, and aviator cap. She's really just a pilot enlisted, actually slightly more expensive. Her face is shared with Aaron Gilbert, a third Ghostbusters reference. And then here's the final guard from the final juniors set. Right, oh, that's it for 2018. Let's not dilly dally, jump straight into 2019. Lego made a 13 episode mini animated series called Legend of Isla Nublar. And there we get some sets and some new characters within the Jurassic World universe or the Jurassic World. Okay, this is Hudson Harper. He appeared in the Dilophosaurus on the Loose set. His expressions are his own, which is nice, and pretty decent printing for his hooded sweatshirt with the Jurassic World a logo. I think it's interesting that he's got a Jurassic World shirt underneath his Jurassic World hoodie. Seems a little bit like overkill. He's incredibly cheap as a fig. And then from the same set we have the Park Worker. What makes her exclusive is the print for her torso. Not a bad bit of detailing honestly. And the hat hair combo piece is kind of a fun one to have. Let's move on to the next set. Sinjin Prescott came from the Baryonyx Face Off the Treasure Hunt set. Honestly a pretty fun looking one. I do like that big dinosaur. And frankly he is just a fun looking adventure guy to have. His torso and face print belongs to just him. He comes with a nice little map piece as well. Sells for around four bucks, listed slightly higher than a lot of the other guys from this line. And then here is Danny Nadermeyer, who has almost the exact same leg printing as the very first Jurassic World fig I showed you, though slightly different. He's got a nice little bit of printing for his shirt popping through on the torso. His face appeared on another version of him that you're about to see in one second, and he's listed for around $4. And then once again, we have another version of Owen. There really are a lot of these guys. He appeared in the Triceratops Rampage set, as well as one other you're about to see in a second. What makes him unique is the print for his torso. It's basically a shirt that's gray and not torn with some slight ruffles slash wrinkles. He's around two bucks and then this is a tourist in a pink jacket from the same set. It's described as pink jacket, but we all know it's a vest. Frankly, it's actually a really nice one to get. I think it's a really fun print. Her expression is shared with Queenie Goldstein. Awesome expressions. And this is a good example of a high quality filler, quote unquote, fig to get in a set, my personal opinion. Simon Masriani also makes an appearance again in this set. He's got a different suit, a much more standard one, but I kind of like the simplistic bit here. It's a three piece with a lighter blue vest. The print for it is exclusive to him, along with the expressions for his his face. He's around $4 and Allison Miles is the last fig from this set. Extremely simple printing for her lab coat on the front. This is about as basic as it gets but 
Not terrible, obviously. Those expressions are exclusively hers, which is kind of nice. And she too is selling for around $4. Now this last set is basically the craziest one that they released from the Jurassic World line. At least so far, T-Rex vs. Dino Mech Battle has a new version of Claire Deering. Good looking sand green torso print. I like the uh, negative space for the hips and the stripes. A well-made fig, though it really is just the torso that makes her unique in any way, shape, or form. She's around four bucks, while the next version of Danny Nader Meyer is around six and that is because his uh, his torso is just really cool he's I think the only fig from this collection that has dual molded arms and the second one with prints the printing of course matches up with his Hawaiian shirt great look for a fig in general the white pants also uh, just feels pretty nice for a not so well-known character it's nice to see that people just appreciate a good looking torso piece when they have it a younger version of Vic Hoskins is here you can see that his hair is black now though he's pretty much the same fig the expressions for him have changed ever so slightly he looks a little bit more sinister here and he rests at a four dollar minifigure now the last set of the entire Jurassic World line came out and this is where a lot of the collectability comes in. The Jurassic Park T-Rex Rampage was an absolutely massive one and kind of exactly what some of the older, more nostalgic builders really like. It's a large, super detailed display piece with the T-Rex and the gate. Ian Malcolm is the first one up. This is after he's been injured. You can see the tourniquet on his leg. His shirt is all the way open. Bare minimum, I feel like you're going to be paying 15 bucks, though his price can get a bit higher than that very quickly. Not too many vendors are selling them. Even less for John Hammond, and his bare minimum price is 20 bucks, but frankly, uh, you'd be lucky to get him for that cheap. He's got dual molded arms, a simple print for the shirt, but highly detailed, and of course that print for his face is exclusive. The Amber Staff is a nice touch. And then hold on to your butts, you got Ray Arnold, Samuel L. Jackson's character. His minimum buy it price is actually slightly higher than John Hammond. And the lowest possible price for him in the States is $35. If Lego made cigarette pieces, this would be the guy that would have one for sure. And the detailing for his body is pretty rock solid all the way around. I like the inclusion of that little tiny Jurassic Park logo. And the dual molded legs is definitely a nice touch for him. Dennis Nedry is the next guy up, certainly a fun fan favorite, though a lot of the collectability here really is a popularity contest. He's around $15. The print is pretty excellent. You really can see kind of a chubby belly impression in the front, which is nice. And his alternate ink splatter expression is probably the best one from the entire collection. I love the callbacks to very specific scenes, and I think the designers here had a lot of fun putting these characters together. Now, Ellie Sattler is technically the last exclusive fig here and the only thing that makes her different from the first time we saw her is the fact that her hair is in a ponytail this time though none of the pieces here are actually exclusive that's why she's listed at significantly lower around $15 and Alan Grant technically came out a second time in this set though he's exactly the same as the previous version. Now here we are looking at the total collection one more time. We've got a lot of the dinosaurs, not every single little mold is present, but the majority I would say is here, and it's fun to see what those early brick-built versions of the dinosaurs looked like. All in all, there's not a lot of color diversity when you're taking a look at the figs uh, when they're really set up together, which is interesting, but a decent amount of detail is certainly present for these characters. If we were to get one other fig to add to this collection, I know there's a bunch of sets coming out this year, but one other specialty fig I'd love to add to the collection would be an Elvis version of Dennis Nedry, like his little hacker profile that pops up and blocks them from accessing the rest of the park. And with that, that is the end of this relatively long collection review video. Thanks so much for watching guys remember to let me know what types of videos you'd like to see in the future if you enjoy our content you can always like or subscribe and we'll see you next time at brick vault yeah.